Hey friend, in this video, we're gonna be talking all about how to paint watercolor details. So I'm gonna give you seven tips for painting watercolor details, some really interesting and surprising ways of adding details, but then also some more traditional ways of adding details are gonna be included in this video. So let's dive in. Okay, so tip number one for painting details with watercolor is the dry brush effect. So the more buttery or thick your consistency of paint on your brushes. So if you have the least amount of water on your brush and it's more like a creamy, buttery consistency, the more you're gonna be able to use this effect. And I love using the dry brush effect for details like light speckling or sprinkled on the surface of the ocean or water. I've done this a bunch and I have a lot of this coming out in my third book, Everyday Watercolor Oceans, which is due to release in the summer of 2023. But I love using this effect for sweeping across really broad strokes so that you get that dry texture poking through and it kind of looks like light reflecting or shining on top of water. So the second tip for painting watercolor details is using masking fluid or sometimes referred to as drawing gum. I love using this stuff. It can be a little difficult or tricky to get used to at first, um, but you just use a brush and you paint it in like you would be painting in with watercolor paint. And it's like this sticky, elasticy rubber type of stuff that reserves all of the whites that you wanna save. So once it dries, it's kind of got this rubber texture and you can paint over it and then use this eraser um, that comes with the masking fluid. I'll link to the exact eraser that I use to pick up the masking fluid. If you just use your fingernail or a normal eraser, you can still do that, but it'll sometimes tear the watercolor paper underneath. So if you don't want that to happen, I'll link to the eraser that I use that is used for specifically for getting up drawing gum or masking fluid. But masking fluid is perfect for reserving your highlights or the areas that you don't wanna to touch with pigment. Um, but you don't want to think about it. You don't want to like, oh, oh I want to use, I want to leave that little speck um, with just the watercolor paper or a bright white. So I need to avoid painting that area. Masking fluid is great for, uh, for example, I posted this video on my Instagram where I, I painted in masking fluid first to emulate the crash or the foam look on top of a water surface, the ocean. And then I painted in a wash of phthalo turquoise and ultramarine blue and a few other colors with wet and wet technique and wet and dry. And then once that was finally done, I lifted up the uh, uh, masking fluid and painted a little bit of sh shadow on the wider areas to make it look a little bit more full of depth, a little bit rounder instead of flat. So masking fluid is great for adding detail. You do it first, paint over it once it's dry and then lift it off and you have bright white underneath. You could also use masking fluid for painting florals or animals. It doesn't matter what subject it is you're painting. If you want to reserve any bright whites, masking fluid is awesome. They also make masking fluid markers or pens and I love using those for little, little highlights on eyeballs or tiny to reach corners and areas with masking fluid that I might need. So I'll link to all of that in the description of this video. Tip number three for painting details with watercolor is to use negative space. So obviously tip number two was using masking fluid, but sometimes there's just times where you need to use negative space. And typically that is an area that's bigger that I know that I can avoid or I'll pencil it in. Um, and I just don't wanna take the time to use masking fluid, wait for it to dry, scrape it off my brush, scrape it off my paper. It can kind of be laborious to use masking fluid. It's very awesome to use at times, but if you just don't wanna put in all the time and effort, I get it, negative space is your friend. So either pencil out the shape you can have, uh, maybe you're doing this with your florals or your highlights and eyeballs on your animals or portraits, whatever it is that you're painting. Um, negative space is your friend with watercolor because we don't lighten colors with white or we don't add white typically. You can, we'll talk about that later. Uh, but if you're just using watercolor, you can't really get your bright whites or bright vibrant lighter colors with layering on top because it's a transparent water-based medium. So watercolor, I like to use negative space for when I wanna reserve my whites or maybe I wanna just have a really cool layered effect with my florals or I wanna paint the space around the flower like the leaves in my white floral video and other flowers that I have in my florals to accentuate that there's a white flower on top of that. Negative space is space that you're not putting any paint on. So it's, it's just blank, empty space. So you want to make sure that you're either penciling out that negative space or you're you know exactly the shape that you want it to be so it doesn't just become kind of 
crunchy and weird and tight uh, before painting so that you can use the positive space or the space that you are creating and painting to accentuate the white flower or the white detail, whatever it is that's going in your negative space. Tip number four for painting with watercolor four is glazing. So if you want to, let's say you, you're painting a realistic floral, this could also apply to portraits or landscapes, but you have all of your details down, your shadows, and you just wanna apply a light wash of a hue on top. I did this with my patrons in one of my Patreon exclusive tutorials where we taught, where I taught how to paint a watercolor daffodil. And one of the very last steps we did was to glaze over the flower with a brighter yellow so that we accentuated and pulled out that yellow even on top of the shadows. Some of the shadow colors were done with purple and brown undertones. And so glazing over with that yellow is just gonna combine or make everything feel more cohesive if you have other tonal values in your painting. So if I have my shadow colors are more brown and purple, but the rest of my flower when it's in the light is yellow, then glazing over it with a thin wash of yellow is gonna help tie all of those colors together in your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. So glazing is a great way to just add that final touch of color when you're basically when you're done with your painting and you just want to tie all of your colors together, you want to make sure that this is done very lightly. So you're using a lot of water and your base layers are completely dry. If they're not dry, they're going to mix all together and become really muddy. So make sure your base layers are completely dry. Next tip number five for painting details with watercolor is actually not with watercolor. It's with a calligraphy brush or a calligraphy pen or an X-Acto knife or something like that where you're scraping off pigment to basically what you would do with adding white gouache or uh, using masking, masking fluid and scraping that off. If you have tiny flecks or like in an ocean spray, if you have a wave crashing on a rock or you wanna show some sort of water spray effect and you don't have white gouache where you can spray it or you just want that look from scraping it, you can glide your calligraphy pen or your X-Acto knife across the area and you'll get this flecked look, um, kind of like what you would get with a dry brush, um, but you can be very specific of where you want those white areas to be to come back to life. So you can take your knife or your calligraphy pen and just kind of scrape up some pigment on certain areas to give that spray effect. I love using that with water. I have that um, as a chapter in my third book, Everyday Watercolor Oceans, where I have a wave crashing on a rock and I used an X-Acto knife to scrape off some of the pigment in one of the very last steps to show a very speckled sprayed look with the water. It could also be good for if you don't have white gouache or you don't have masking fluid and you wanna show a tiny, tiny white speck area. This isn't ideal for big areas of white. Um, so keep that in mind. But if you just have a tiny little eyeball with a highlight or if you wanna show some wider white fleck details in a flower, like little freckles or spots on a flower, then this is a perfect technique for that. Tip number six on how to paint watercolor details is going to be lifting. So lifting can be done with a dry brush. It can be done with paper towel, Q-tip, anything that can soak up or lift up pigment and water that is still wet on your paper. I love using crumpled up paper towels. You can even do this with saran wrap um, to add some texture. You could, do, you could use Q-tips, um, but I love using paper towels when I'm painting in a washy sky and just dabbing my paper towel and lifting up color because that paper crumpled up paper towel is going to give the like clumpy, fluffy effect of a cloud that, and you don't have to paint in the cloud. You just kind of dab your paper towel, lift up the color, and it gives you this nice subtle cloud look in your skies. I did this in the lively landscape video tutorial that we did recently with gouache and watercolor. So make sure you check that video out because I show you how to do it in that video. And I've used a few, it a few other times as well. Tip number seven, last but not least for painting watercolor details is detail brush marks. So obviously we talked about all those fun, unique, different ways and uh, materials that we can use to add details in our watercolor paintings. But then we also need to remember that we can add details with our own brushes and watercolor paint in the final steps of our painting. So we can use white gouache. Um, I, did, I did this in a bearded iris for my second book, Everyday Watercolor Flowers, 
uh, where I added detail to the stamen of the flower using a bright cadmium orange and some white in some of the details. And then obviously in the veins of flowers, I love adding details with my size two brush or a fine liner brush and some really buttery opaque uh, consistency with my watercolor paint. So my details really stand out and are crisp. Um, I love using details as well in highlights with white gouache or white ink. Um, but adding watercolor details or details with your brush later on, even with like the lively landscape that I did with little uh, shadows in the trees and the foreground can be done dark or light and always are typically always done in your final steps. So I always rec recommend, even if you're in the middle of a painting and you're kind of feeling lost or you feel like maybe it's not really coming together, I should just scrap it. The details usually always make things turn around. So sometimes when I'm working on a painting, I might stop halfway through and be like, like for example, the lively landscape painting. I painted in this blue layer for, this, for these trees and I was like, mm, I have no idea where this is going. But the more I added detail and color and detail on top of it, the more you start to see it really come together. And that's when you really find your way with a painting. So stick with it, be patient and wait till you get to those details because you never know, you might really surprise yourself and end up loving the painting. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. If I forgot any tips on details or techniques or materials that you love to use for adding details to your watercolor paintings, make sure you drop them in the comments below. I would love to find out new techniques or new materials, and I'm sure people viewing would love to read the comments and also check that out as well. As always, all of the links and whatnot that I mentioned in these videos are in the description. So all the materials that I've talked about and further resources, I have a Patreon channel where I'm sharing exclusive Patreon only tutorials and live art classes. Make sure you check out that Patreon channel, I'll link it in this video as well as free resources that I have for you. The Complete Beginner's Guide to Watercolor on this channel is one of my favorite, most popular videos, and it shows you everything you would need to know about watercolor if you're just starting out, or even if you're, you're an experienced watercolor painter, check it out. And then I also have a free watercolor, floral watercolor ebook that you can download that'll give you a visual guide that you can read through and have a little bit of fun with the exercises, as well as my everyday watercolor books that are available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and a few other book stores worldwide. I hope that was helpful for you. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.